What's up, guys? Time for another great lecture. This time for something very creative. You're gonna like this video a lot. It's called Sicilian Wing Gambit. Uh, I know most of you is going to like this video very much because you are the one who directs game. So uh, basically, uh, you just go with the gambit on the very uh, second move early out of the opening and it could be very confusing for the Sicilian players also this video you're, you might find very useful because of all the openings that you might face probably Sicilian is the most common I believe that 40% of the games against E4 uh, are against Sicilians and I believe on a range from 1600 to for example 2400 uh, the biggest number of games uh, will uh, will be played or, or uh, were just played in, uh, in Sicilian opening anyways let's get started but before that I just want to say hi to uh, I just came from Egypt and I just want to say hi to my friend Michael from Belgium who approached to me in hotel and uh, asked me are you the guy uh, who make those videos on YouTube and I said yes so basically I became celebrity uh, let's go after like e4 c5 b4 Wing Gambit is a very interesting Gambit and the point of this uh, opening is that once you play b4 you just sack the pawn uh, for the sake of activity of uh, good center, uh, easy development and mainly you're just expecting of your opponent once they take on d4 to be able to uh, take the center and play d4 or to play a3 where you sack another pawn uh, just like I previously told you in order to include bishop on a3 so the bishop's activity knight on a3 so it can go on b5 in some variations or rook to a3 so it can control a file and uh, sometimes even go and slide along the third rank so after b4 there are so many moves of course that the main subject of the lecture will be on the second move c takes before but before that we just have to check like the whole bunch of moves for black so let's get started with these side variations that are not likely to be used against you but for those of you who would like to go with this wing gambit and uh, for example uh, to play against uh, Sicilian against weaker guys most of the games you'll see the guys who who will say okay he wants gambit I don't want to take I just want to confuse him and they will play something even worse than that so let's go e6 for example of all the moves I believe this one uh, should be uh, treated as the worst one why they just defend the pawn they want to they don't want to take the gambit you take on c5 and you play d4 what better can you get out of one gambit uh, of course you just take on c5 with tempo you just play d4 with tempo you just get the center better development and everything with tempo it reminds me of the wing gambit against french so after d4 basically they have two uh, options bishop e7 and bishop b6 for example bishop b6 in my opinion is weaker and way less defending for black what do i mean by that of course you play knight f3 developing your piece and controlling the center and for example they can play lots of moves but knight c6 is bad because of d5 for example and you just get tempo uh, knight f6 is very suspicious because you play bishop d3 defending going for castles and e5 or e5 followed by knight d5 bishop d3 and so on uh, that's why I believe d5 will be played almost uh, in majority of your games you just play e5 and now you play like a French advanced they go knight c6 and you go bishop d3 uh, of course there is an obvious tactics uh, behind this if they take on d4 you just take go with the bishop b5 and you win the piece they gotta go with bishop d7 and now they really threaten to take on d4 uh, of course you had played c3 
which defends the pawn on d4 and at the same time prevents knight b4. When they go knight g and e7, play castles. This is why I told you that the bishop b6 is uh, worse in terms of defense for black, but at the same time, it's more logical because when you play d4 uh, at this point, uh, your opponent might say, if I play bishop e7, I can only develop my knight on f6. If I develop my knight on f6, he can go with e5, bishop d3, and he can attack me uh, on the king's side since there is no more knight around the king. So most of these guys who play bishop b6, they will say, this is a logical, easy developing. Is it like that? Of course it's not. You play castles. And for example, they have lots of problems in position like this. You want to go with bishop a3. You want to go knight a3, knight b5. You want to go knight g5 with queen h5 with lots of other tactical options. But let me just show you how, for example, in the past when I was younger and when I played the Sicilian wing gambit, I won most of my games. So when I go with uh, something like this, they usually went for castles. Da -da -da -da. How do we call this tactical motive? Uh, it's called Greek gift. I don't want to tell you now mythological point of uh, why do we call it Greek gift, but let's just go with the bishop takes h7. So, for this sacrifice, you just need bishop that is going to be sacrificed on h7, and you just knight and the queen that are going to attack and go after this king, and at the same time, they shouldn't have queen or bishop that is going to control the g5 square. That is important. That's why I insisted that the bishop on e7 is way better defender than the bishop on b6. So now you see the bad point of the bishop b6. Bishop h7, king h7, knight g5. If king g8, typical, queen h5, threatening mate in one, they gotta go with rook e8, check baby, check baby, check baby, and now, and now the end is near. So you just go with bishop h3. That's a very nice one. Bishop on a3, pins the knight, and who's gonna stop queen a8? No one. It's mate. So, that's the point. So, after knight g5, they gotta go king g6. Those who defend better, they will go like this. And sometimes, you might start swearing me so bad, saying like, Maya said, this is almost mate. How should I mate him if I play queen d3 f5? So you gotta know a couple more moves in order to finish this passers. Queen g4. You now threaten this cover check. Knight e6. They gotta go f5. Boom. Queen goes back to g3 and once again threatens an obvious knight e6 followed by knight e8. And when they play f4, bishop f4. And when they play knight f5, you can start, you know, like shaking, trembling. This, this guy uh, tricked us. He made a video and it doesn't work. Hey, calm down. What are you talking about? Queen to d3. Who's going to stop g4? King cannot move to h6 because of knight f7. And don't you ever think that I come up with the bad lines. Thanks. So just like you see, bishop b6 is the move to go there. So after like... Um, uh, bishop e7 I believe it's a little bit better in terms of defense but it's way more difficult in terms of development so you just go knight f3 they go d6 I find it logical because if they play d5 now you just play e5 and say hey what are you going to do with this pretty uh, crampy position and the bishop on e7 prevents knight e7 at the same time you can play knight f6 amen what are you doing so basically, they go d6, going for some sort of flexibility. You go bishop d3, knight f6, castles, castles. And here you can go so many, for so many things. I like rook e1, queen e2, followed by e5, queen e4, and stuff like that. But probably the most logical could be knight c3. If you ask me, what would I do? I very much enjoy when I play e5 in similar type of situations. I very much enjoy when I have the pawn on e5 and play these type of games. Because when they go knight e5, they don't have any more knight around the king. So when we go with uh, d takes e5, knight e5, now they want to go with knight before 
let me just tell you one thing if they take your light square bishop once again i'm gonna tell you better switch this game play cards bowling uh whatever uh, but please this game is not for you so basically you need to keep the light square bishop in order to attack don't forget about that so even c3 is way better because it stops knight before and you want to go with a famous queen e2 queen e4 for example knight c6 queen e2 b6 queen e4 threatening mate they gotta go g6 boom with tempo here uh for example uh rook e1 or uh, to to over support bishop e7 knight bd2 and whatever they do rook ad1 queen goes on g4 h4 h5 and you go after the king and the weak pawn on g6 that's how you have to play these positions i just showed you how should you play wing gambit against second move e6 let's go with d6 d6 is a normal way of trying to reject gambit by not taking on uh, b4 by def but defending the pawn on c5 you of course take play bishop b2 and as soon as they play knight c6 i found all the games being played like this you just go with the bishop b5 plan is obvious you want to go with a4 knight f3 short castle in some lines knight c3 in other lines knight a3 knight c4 you always want to take on c6 to double these bonds and to play for the rest of the game better middle game i don't want to go deeper than that then they go b6 uh, napo played a game recently in um, uh, blitz he captured on c5 played bishop b5 jumped knight c3 to defend the pawn and after knight c6 played bishop c4 i very much like this position knight f3 castles rook b1 uh, bishop a1 threatening the bishop on b7 i know i'm going a little bit faster but all these moves are just so logical and here you have two options of course that the d4 could give you just and bring you like solid game with a little bit better position and this is nice for white apart from that they can go with knight g5 and knight g5 what napo did i also very much like it he in some positions threatens to take on b7 in some other positions like in the game he just wants to go with bishop e6 followed by knight e6 and those stuff in some other games if h6 knight can go back to h3 and then he can go with f4 and f5 very interesting position with lots of creative attacking ideas on the king side uh we've seen e6 we've seen d6 b6 and let's take a look at e5 makes sense why because if you take they could recapture a bishop where they would develop the piece and at the same time if you ever play any bishop b2 a bishop on b2 will be kind of restricted by the pawn on e5 so here my vote goes to one very surprising move it's b5 not too many games i found with b5 but that's the point let's go with something creative something surprising and something very interesting so when you go b5 you just prevent knight c6 and you just want to go with the knight b5 and knight c3 controlling the d5 square so when they play knight f6 knight c3 uh, bishop e7 i played a blitz game where my opponent went for d5 i captured i did capture and this reminds me of a grunfeld game where you take on d5 and then bring your knight on e2 to go on c3 and to harass this queen with tempo my opponent played bishop e7 knight e3 bishop b2 bishop c4 to prevent bishop e6 knight cannot go to c6 all of a sudden even though this position looks a little bit suspicious you just have to keep in mind that yes we do have this bishop that at the moment does nothing but this is a monstrous bishop this is a fantastic knight that can always go on d5 so we have control of the center and the fact that they can't play knight c6 uh, and not even bishop e6 helps us a lot because we just want to go castles queen h5 and f4 this reminds me of the bishop's opening and some of the lines there so after knight e7 d3 why d3 because when they play knight b6 in order to kick uh, away this bishop from c4 you just go bishop b3 and now they don't have c4 that's the point so after for example uh, i i know a game uh, where the guy played queen d6 
hoping to play bishop e6 and to execute the bishop and b3 why well, just went for castles hoping for example for some knight e4 queen h5 f4 rook a to e1 and fantastic game for white and when black played bishop e6 full of hope that this is what he's looking for why well, just played knight e4 kicking the queen away from the bishop so if you move the queen away boom you take on e6 and double these pawns in the center if they move the queen somewhere like on d7 you play bishop takes e5 and you're up a pawn just like you see this b5 move in third move believe it or not is kind of like i don't want to say novelty but not too many games you fi you'll find in the database with it uh, we've seen all the side moves and i hope you enjoyed so it's time for the main lines it's time for the main lines and it's c takes b4 it's c takes b4 and when they play c takes b4 now i just have to be like uh, very very uh, helpful here and to give you some very important advices so here this is exactly the point of the wing gambit you, you want to force your opponent to take on before in which case you've got two options first option is to build up the center with d4 and i'm gonna show you like briefly what are you supposed to do in some of these positions like you're just holding the center you don't care about the pawn and you just want to carry on developing your pieces another option is a3 and that's going to be the main uh, course of this lecture so let's go with d4 um, when i made this file to show you and uh, trying to uh, teach you the wing gambit uh, from white's point of view uh, i just i didn't want to go um, uh, into this file without showing you d4 i believe d4 is such an important and creative alternative for you also a good friend of mine and i am Milos Popovic from Serbia showed me the following variation so this time I'm just sending him greetings after d4 how did we play in that position so in after d4 they go d5 everyone goes d5 any knight f6 you just play either bishop d3 or e5 with tempo any knight c6 you just kick it away with uh, d5 any d5 looks like almost the only reaction here you you shouldn't go with e5 that seems to be almost uh, the most logical and the only move uh, you take surprising because most of these wing gambits guys they either go with e5 that reminds them of some of the wing gambit against the french defense or they just learned some typical ways of playing e5 a3 and play like this it's not a point point is to take on d5 so black has to take on d5 what else right and now boom c4 all of a sudden white doesn't care about anything but a full activity so at the same time this video and this position reminds me of the leonhard gambit scandinavian that you can find on the channel so, uh, so after b takes c3 knight c3 boom this is really a scandinavian but do you know what is this this is an improved version of the Leonhard Gambit because C and B files are open. Open B file can really help us, can really help us because of the open B file. So let's go. Uh, queen D8, you just keep on developing, give check with tempo, and play Rook to B1. The fact that you have an open B file and possibility to play Rook B1 really helps you a lot in terms to claim for example the compensation i played a blitz game like this my opponent captured i did recapture threatening to take on b7 and after a queen d7 queen to b3 believe me i was very happy with my game on top of all that i'm not only threatening this but i'm also threatening knight e5 queen a5 is what everybody does even i played few games with the black pieces like this my opponents went with bishop d2 probably i played more than 10 times this position with the white pieces and probably i won like uh five times uh, using the following trick let me just show you very tricky position black has to play knight f6 or e6 believe it or not knight c6 
which looks very logical, loses on the spot, while at the same time, bishop f5 loses as well. Let me just show it again. One guy played bishop f5. Looks extremely logical. You want to develop your light square bishop before you complete your development with e6. Bet. White just has to remember the following move and you're winning. It's queen f3. What's so special about queen f3? You threaten to take the pawn on b7. I don't get it. What's the point? Yeah? So when they go with knight c6, the point comes now. You just go with knight b5. And knight b5, and all of a sudden, disconnects, uh, disconnects queen on a5 and bishop on um, uh, f5. And at the, at the same time, your bishop is attacking the queen, and you just want to go after the bishop on f5. Believe it or not, you're winning a piece. Uh, this is how I won a blitz game. But let me just show you how I won five blitz games. They all played knight c6. When they play knight c6, which seems to be very logical, you just go d5. And when they go knight e5, what else? I mean, it looks logical. You just go knight b5, harassing the queen. They all go queen b6. Da -da -da -da. Rook c1, go home, baby. Learn the line, learn the gambit. Who taught you to play chess like this, baby? So, white wins. Just like you see, three pieces are absolutely enough to claim the win in 10 moves. So that's why they have to play either e6, in which case you play a good version of the Leonhard Gambit, since they have lots of problems with open b file and pawn on b7. That's why most of these guys play knight f6, which seems to be logical and a little bit more flexible. Why? Because they still keep the flexibility of the light square bishop and its possible future development. Let me just show you another interesting game, a game where you just play on a compensation. So after like knight f6, you go knight f3, e6, b, rook to b1. That's what I like about this line. Sometimes this rook goes and fights against the pawn on b7. Sometimes if you say, but I don't want to have problems with this pawn. I want to play b6. No, you won't be able to play. I'm, I'm just giving you an example. Why is b6 usually bad? Of course, nobody's going to play that here. You will. You can always go with the knight, a rook to b5 harassing the queen. In some other positions, you go knight b5 and you just go with knight c7 and threatening like this. So they can't go with this move. They got to put the queen back. And when they put the queen back, thank you so much. Thank you so much because you give me so many tempi so I can develop my pieces. So look at this. Open B file. My rook is there. Possible weakness on, F on B7. Four minor pieces developed. Yes, isolated pawn. But if you remember, with isolated pawn, we should be playing if we, if we could attack. And here, we're not doing anything else but attacking. So let's, let me show you. Bishop E7, castles, castles, 94. Now you think... Why this? But if they take bishop e4, you threaten on b7. If they play knight c6, not a big problem. I can play queen c2. I can win on h7. I can win the knight and the pawn back on c6. And you're just worse. If you play knight c6, like, what are you trying to do to me, man? I'm just going to keep on developing and go after the d4 pawn. You just say, queen e2. So I'm getting ready to smash you with rook to e or rook to d1. Why? Because I want a further development of my pieces. At the same time, you say, hey, what the hell are you doing? Your rook on b1 looks like a good piece, right? Let me just play b6 to make it stupid. <laughs> Tactical task for you. White moves and wins. Knight takes e4, bishop f6, go home. Go home, man. Go home, man, and forget to play this game. This is not for you. So they can play like this as well. They got to take on d4. When they take on d4, you take on d4. Play bishop c3 with tempo. Now you threaten to take on f6 and to kill them. They got to play queen d8. Now you take on f6 first and play rook f to d1. Right now, you want to go with discovery. 
you want to take the queen and once again send your opponent home when they go with bishop d7 you just play tempo and tempo completely lost torx on the open files fantastic two bishops in the center queen on e2 that controls like everything well your opponent had lots of troubles with a bad queen on d8 and even worse pinned bishop on d7 what can i tell you uh, as a conclusion this is a fantastic alternative for you as a third move and an option of course don't get me wrong many of you are going to send me comments why didn't you cover this hey you're the worst coach ever why didn't you cover this everybody please this i'm just giving you ideas i'm just telling you where should you look uh, for some interesting options and variations and you also have to do some of research i'm not gonna give you like everything you gotta ask me for lessons so let's go for the third move a3 uh, it's also a very interesting move uh, i very much like uh, this uh, typical gambit approach and let's see what's happening after a3 after a3 uh, they have so many options uh, of course that one of the main options is d5 but let's just take a look what happens if they just go straight away with b takes a3 nothing you can play bishop a3 and bishop a3 always should be taken as something very logical for you because you've just developed your bishop in e6 you're just happy to spoil the castle and to play the normal game thanks to the open file and this reminds me on banco gambit reversed so you play d4 you play knight f3 knight c3 bishop d3 short castle and you're just fine well they have lots of problems on the on the light squares and they just have weak king another thing is if they play d6 you just go d4 bishop d3 you play knight f3 castles and you just play logical developing game uh, with pretty good compensation for the sacrifice pawn mainly thanks to the open a file on the other hand apart from bishop takes a3 my vote goes to d4 why because one of the main points of this opening is to get the center for two sacrificed pawns at the moment by the way one of these pawns is going to uh, be back in a moment you just get a full center and full activity of your pieces that's the point of the wing gambit so after d6 knight f3 knight f6 bishop d3 g6 i believe of all the options against the wing gambit i'm just showing you absolutely the toughest one to crack from black's point of view they just play g6 so you can play e5 and all these sacrifices uh, like with the great gift things they go g6 bishop g7 and castles with a hyper solid approach you just go h3 to stop any bishop g4 you just go with rookie one to support d4 pawn and sometimes e5 ideas you just go with knight a3 to go with sometimes knight b5 sometimes knight c4 but mainly you just want to play bishop g5 queen d2 rook a to b1 you have a nice game your rook on the uh on the, on the open b file goes after the weak pawn any b5 you want to face with c4 at the same time any rook c8 you just you've just built up a strong center um strong control of the game and this happened in a correspondence game between pretty good players um, i find this position absolutely fine for white because of full activity potential weakness not useful bishop and b7 not entirely active bishop and g7 but at the same time that's a good defender and black just uh, you know white can just uh cope with some c5 d5 e5 ideas depending on circumstances in the game apart from b takes a3 they can go for e6 e6 i've seen in a couple of games and here i want to uh, uh, bring up one name simon williams ginger gm he likes this opening so much and he kills everybody with it so let me just show you how he treats these positions he takes on b4 plays bishop b2 with tempo threatening on g7 goes with e5 kicking the knight away plays c4 and let me just show you his nice game against uh, Kudarinov played on chess.com back to 2021 this guy played knight b6 and simon in his typical style played a rook to a3 
that's another creative idea you can do in this stuff uh, of positions so what's so special about this for k3 you second exchange and that's exactly what simon did in order to get a fantastic dark square bishop without a possibility for them to castle and with full control on the dark squares this guy played knight c6 simon went here threatening on g7 this guy probably thought let me just get a pawn and when he takes to defend the rook hey man after bishop d3 simon williams ginger gm in 12 moves was completely winning can you imagine can you imagine the guy cannot defend the rook and cannot defend the bishop g6 so black could have resigned immediately he played few more moves after a c4 97 i'm once again gonna show you the game of simon williams he plays queen g4 and this guy plays way more logical and tougher knight f5 or knight g6 if knight g6 simon went for the typical reaction when the knight is on g6 h4 followed by h5 only move is h5 queen g3 over supporting e5 and pressuring knight on g6 playing bishop d3 going after this knight now e5 is important to be supported so the knight is hanging rook h6 f4 now you support these pawns and you want to go with knight f3 d6 bishop e4 d takes e5 f takes e5 knight e2 knight e2 played like this and simon finished his opponent like this knight beats e3 bishop f5 and played knight e5 that's what i like about his games he's always very creative and cares about the activity of his pieces and a lot about tactics and finally game of mamajarov in these positions where his opponent played knight f5 defending the pawn on g7 mamajarov played bishop uh, d3 the game was played in european club cup played h5 anytime they play h5 with the queen and uh g4 maybe they defend the pawn on g7 for the time being but at the same time when you bring the queen back they just weaken the king side in global and they can never play castles because the h5 pawn is weak so after knight c6 knight f3 if castles of course castles and knight a3 with a great compensation if d5 major have captured this guy now threatened to take on f5 uh, he played king f8 and after castles mamajar captured played d4 and killed this guy with knight c3 rookie one c5 where he took like the full initiative and destroyed his opponent we could have seen b takes a3 e6 what happens if they play logical knight c6 believe it or not now i'm gonna show you game of probably the best player in the history of chess magnus carlsen he played this wing gambit with a white pieces against Inner Kiev in the World Blitz Championship. And that's interesting. Usually, wing gambit against Sicilian is used as a nice weapon in these blitz and I'd say faster time control formats. So after a takes knight b4, d4, d5, c3, knight c6, Magnus captured and played knight a3. I already have to say that I like this position for white. Magnus threatened knight b5, reminds me of some Sicilian elephant positions with an improved version. A file is open. A file is open, so my rook breeds. And after bishop f5, knight b5, threatened fork. This guy played rook c8, Magnus captured. And Magnus in 11 moves against 2700 GM had much better position already. Of course, he won the game. Finally, e5. e5 is something that I like to play. And I don't want to tell you play b a takes b4 because if you play a takes b4, c3, bishop e7, d4, this is how I usually treat these positions from Black's point of view without any problems. But here I want to suggest you a specialty knight f3, developing piece, and threatening pawn. They go knight c6, defending pawn, and now you play bishop e2. Important thing is do not take on b4. So just play bishop b2, you threaten on e5, and you just wait. If they go d6, now you can take on b4 and break in the center with d4, and this is a nice move. Queen c7, defends on e5, threatens on c2, but boom, knight a3. You defend on c2, and you threaten b5. All of a sudden, e5 is weak, queen on c7 uh, kind of jeopardized, and what is almost winning. Queen b6, not a big deal. I don't see what you want. 
I'll play bishop to d3. That's a specialty. Like lots of guys might say, but why do we play bishop d3, Maya? Who, who, who told you as a coach to teach us to place this light square bishop in front of the pawn? This looks disgusting. And I just have to say, yes, at first glance, it does look disgusting. But let me just show you the plan. You just overprotect this pawn temporarily. So I can play castles, rookie one, bring my bishop back to f1 or play bishop c4, and then I'll play normal stuff. So after d6, he protects, of course, e5 pawn as well. You just go with this. Uh, castles, knight f6, rookie one, bishop g4. You win the bishop pair. And I found the game, correspondence game, where white played bishop f1, now captured and got a full compensation with the bishop pair, even though he was down a pawn. I really enjoy this position for white. Uh, okay, not an obvious, not an obvious uh, tactics or anything. I would like to jump with this knight somehow to f5, probably knight c3, knight e2, knight g3, knight f5. I would like to kick his knight away from d4, probably with c3. How am I going to do that? Well, you just have to be a master to do all these things, but I just showed you some of these ideas. Bishop here open files uh, that should give you uh, compensation. Knight f6, you just take on e5, queen e7, and here I get a specialty, d4. And when they play knight e4, bishop e2, uh, you don't want to allow your opponent any kind of x-rays. So it's not a problem. You just, they go d6, castles, and now they're going to have problems with the x-rays and with some pins on the e file. It's a correspondence game between two guys. I believe white had a great position. And finally, if you force them somehow to take, you just take by knight. Why? Because you develop another piece. And when they play d6, just break in the center. Don't you dare to hesitate with this move. Why? Uh, because you want a full activity, because you pressure pawn on e5, and because you want to be active. You now take on d4, develop your bishop, play castles, and here I was wondering how can you claim a compensation? In my opinion, after you take on c6 and knight c4, uh, let me just explain you the essence of this position. You have an open f file, yes, you're down a pawn. That's a bad thing about this position, but there are so many pros about this game. First of all, I open a file, possible weakness on a7, three pawn islands that your opponent has. Uh, and finally, a pretty good activity of your pieces with a possibility to move your queen onto the king's side or maybe break in the center with some e5. Finally, time to show you the main line. After a3, what happens if they just play d5? Of course, you take on d5. And when I played all my bullet games from Black's point of view, I always captured by Quinn, hoping to be very cheap and to give check and to win the rook on a1. Let me just show what happens after knight f6. Not many guys will do this. Statistically, like 10% of players play knight f6. You take on b4, surprising move. And when the knight takes, my point comes now. You play b5. b5 is the move you gotta remember. It prevents knight c6 and gives you lots of creative, nice, tactical things. So after b5, you prevent knight c6. And at the same time, you wanna go with some bishop c4 with further development. Let me just show you what happened in one of my uh, games. My opponent played e5, so he just fought for the center. I played bishop c4. For example, very interesting move is bishop e6. It looks very logical. They just want to jump with this knight on c3 or e3 and win your bishop, in which case black wouldn't be only up a pawn, but would win the bishop pair and would be completely winning. Queen f3. Take a look at this one. They can't move the knight because e6 is hanging. I would take it and create double pawns. If he goes knight c7, I can take on e6 and take on b7. Uh, they have lots of problems. They can't play knight c6. Well, at the same time, they can play knight e7. Terrible problems for your opponent. At the same time, you want to play knight e2, castle, knight c3, or whatever. What is just so much better? Or let's just say has like way easier type of middle game. And finally, if bishop e7 instead of bishop e6, boom, I'm going to do the same. 
You play bishop e6, and that's so logical. Most of your opponents will do this. Looks absolutely healthy. But then you play knight e2. Castles, castles, and look at this. They can't play knight b6. They can't play knight c7. They can't play knight e7. They can't play knight c6. What are they going to do? They gotta do queen d7. You play bishop a3, and you use the rook a3. What can you do? You can play rook to d3, win the piece on the spot. You can play knight c3, followed by rook f2 e1 going for the open a file and possible weakness on a7 you can go for queen h5 rook g3 sometimes going into the king side attack fantastic game and believe it or not after queen f3 they gotta play knight f6 do you know who's gonna play knight f6 only top players against you and basically you don't play against top players and uh, don't worry and you don't have to know it but even if they go for that you play knight e2 knight c3 and you're fine Finally, if bishop f if b5, bishop f5, you go knight f3, e6, bishop b2. Now they can't develop this bishop because this one is hanging. You go with bishop c4 with the idea of bringing the bishop back and afterwards kicking this knight away with c4. Uh, and after castles, rook e1. It's very interesting. Should you exchange? Should you jump with the knight on e5 or play d4? You should be playing d4. You, want, you threaten c4, you play knight bd2 with the same kind of threat. Analyze. Uh, c4 is threatened. Rook a7 is threatened. Why just looks great in this position. Finally, let me show you one of my favorite positions. One of my favorite positions is, uh, so after b4, c takes, a3, when they play d5, you take and they take by queen. Watch out. They threaten very cheap check and you might just go home and resign the game. You will play knight f3 to stop that and to develop your piece. At the same time, you want to play d4. I also want to show you one more thing here. The thing is, if they go with, if you go with bishop b2, preventing queen e5, you can just go with a takes b4 and go with knight a3. That's also an interesting possibility for white. Absolutely fine game with a good compensation for you. But my wood goes to knight f3. So let me just go here. Let me just show you. You want to go d4 and afterwards c3 or a takes b4 and c4. They got to go e5. That's only move in this position. You absolutely can play a takes and go with c3. But my vote goes to a very interesting option. c4. Look at this. I'll show you how creative this move is. They got to go queen e6. If they take on c3, you take knight c3, and now you threaten queen and the pawn on e5. They all move the queen on a5 in order to defend the pawn on e5. You give check, going after this pawn and developing your piece, preparing for castles. If knight c6, knight e5 wins the game and go home, baby. So they gotta go bishop d7, you play queen e2. You overprotect pawn bishop on b5 and attack pawn on e5. They go f6, and I am Shirazi from France played work to be one and got into winning position can you imagine against gm to get into winning position in 10 moves with the wing gambit yes of course you can imagine because he cared about activity and development of his pieces well black just defended himself and took these pawns uh, carelessly so after c4 queen e6 is the only move queen e6 is the only move because queen d6 makes no sense Queen d6 in order to defend pawn, okay, defends the pawn, but makes no sense because you take on b4. First of all, you can't take it because in the worst case scenario, I can take on e5. But at the same time, I can keep on developing myself. And then what the hell is this? Open a file, threat of knight d5, knight b5, bishop a3, knight e5, amen. I don't even want to discuss about this position. So after c4, they got to go queen e6. And the whole point, and that's why I enjoy this position so much, comes now. Boom. Bishop to d3. Can you imagine? You develop this bishop and prepare yourself for a castle. Get ready now, because I found more than 300 games in similar positions. So, if they go, of course, that most of your opponents will say, Bishop d3. Probably he's got something very sneaky and tricky against e4. So most of these guys will go with something like knight c6. 
you play castles you play rookie one and take a look at this i always teach my students hey guys as soon as you see x-rays move your queen from the rook and the file where the rook is so after bishop d6 bishop c2 threatening both d4 a takes b4 followed by d4 knight c3 black is almost hopeless here they go bishop e7 they don't want to take it you don't want to take you don't want to play e4 not a big deal castles rookie one i once again go after this i once again go after this threatening b5 and to win the pawn on e5 and when you play this knight c3 if you ever capture thank you so much i got a bishop here i'm gonna play bishop a3 you won't be able to castle so easily if on the other hand you just go with the castle i can play some knight g5 tricks i can play bishop a3 tricks i can play lots of stuff in similar type of games i can even play in some positions i don't know like uh, bishop f4 win the pawn so many so many uh, the, the things bishop pair and open files that's what makes you being so good in that position after castles you go 95 i like this trick because uh, you can't take on d5 uh, it's not it's not a common trick because bishop h7 and now you just see that the knight g5 is gonna happen if the king which is unable to take on h7 takes it on h7 if queen d6 you just take on b4 and engines here uh, give an equal assessment after some bishop g4 but believe me first of all black has to know to reach this position second thing even here they gotta play like a whole bunch of uh, only moves in order to equalize this is a correspondence game white looks fine and finally what happens if that famous e4 happens here so when they go for fork you just go with short castle they go bishop e7 by the way they can't take of course because you play rookie one and you win the queen they gotta go bishop e7 and for the first time they threaten to win the piece but seriously to win the piece you play rookie one and you threaten the pawn those uh pin pieces queen on e6 king on e8 they look very bad they have to play queen f6 do you know who's gonna play queen f6 no one let's say everybody will develop will defend the pawn and they will say i just want a complete development please leave me alone and then you just go a takes before and when they play castles and say i'm fine you just go knight c3 threatening the pawn they go like this you take the pawn and we started this position like a gambit and we're just finishing it like a much much better position with a great control of the center d4 bishop a3 so many weaknesses with a great position of these knights and possible attacking ideas i just want to show that after knight f6 a takes before and queen g4 where it looks like they are winning the piece at all costs you just play h3 you just play knight e5 you just play fantastic rook a5 move going once again with an x raise against the queen on f5 they can't take on d3 because you play knight f7 and they just fall apart and that's why computers and in all these correspondence games say play queen f6 not a big deal you just play bishop e4 they say hey pat sir i'm up a rook really am i such a big idiot so you play queen to b3 you want to play bishop b2 to trap the queen they gotta go with the queen back on f6 and you play it takes before don't underestimate this position and probability to play this position in the future you're down a rook but you gotta open file develop knight bishop in the center possibly good pawns they can always kick the knight away with b5 and queen on b3 yes on top of all that you have bishop b2 threat they have weak king their upper rook and they have an exposed queen 55 games i found in the database it's one of those positions where engines would always absolutely always favor uh, uh, no they don't favor black but they can defend this position because they can find all those fantastic uh, you know like uh, pretty uh, impossible and uh, uh, hard to find uh, defendable moves for black but here in the human's chess it's not gonna work this way all humans who try to play this position with a black piece is they almost cracked in 10 moves so let me just show you a few games 24 games i found with queen f4 
and 17 games I found with knight c6. Knight c6 look, looks like a logical move. You just play bishop b2 with tempo, b5 with tempo, knight c3 with tempo. You want to go with knight d5. They cannot never play um, any of these knight f6 things. And the thing is, uh, because bishop on e7 is going to be hanging, so after bishop e6, it looks like they just finally managed to close the rook and they just want to play knight f6 castles. It's not going to work, baby d4 and i just want to go with d5 so you can hardly breathe and on top of all that i'm threatening something very sneaky bishop c1 to almost in some some of these lines trap the queen uh, in the game was king f8 bishop c1 and this guy in a correspondence game afterwards managed to win the game don't forget correspondence game to be won with the white pieces being down the rock means that in the human's chest this is completely impossible to be hold and finally if queen f4 lots of guys played queen f4 because they want to place this queen back on c7 to defend and to develop or a complete development with knight f6 move is bishop b2 threatening here now you can play knight f6 even though even even though it looks like uh, very logical because i might go with bishop e5 and when you go like this uh, I might start chasing your queen away like h3 or doing stuff like this. Well, at the same time, I can play just another uh, simple move and uh, kill you in all these positions. Like, uh, But I, I really like this bishop e5 move because they just have to play like this. And you even have some of these bishop b8. You have h3, queen d7. They just have lots of problems in, in a positions like this. And... Uh, there is like lots of tactics for you. You can just have fun and analyze these positions at home. And finally, if they play king f8, now the king is weak. Yes, they're up a rook, but in all those correspondence games, I found this knight d5 threat, harassing the queen. They gotta play knight f6, threatening the bishop and preventing knight d5. And when you play knight d5, they take you play bishop d5 look how interesting is this position you're down a rook but your rook your bishop your threats with bishop e5 knight e5 g3 makes this position hard to be uh, extremely hard for black after knight e6 b5 knight e8 g3 i found a couple of games like this this is a correspondence game between top 2500 uh, correspondence players and white uh, afterwards managed to win the game guys uh, hope that you liked it uh, please subscribe on the channel suggest and uh, to some of your friends this channel just like some of others did in the past and of course uh, i hope you're gonna be able to make so many good results and nice wins with the analysis that i just shared with you thanks so much for following and all the best bye bye